Now, as the parents of baby Prince Oko celebrate the miraculous return of their son, all focus turns to what preventive measures need to be put in place to ensure that this never happens again. As I had mentioned earlier, a baseline survey by the Center for Missing Children Kenya shows that 710 cases of missing and lost children were recorded <clears throat> at police stations in Nairobi back in 2012-2013. We'll be having that discussion shortly. But before that, let's refresh your memories by taking a look at what happened yesterday, a very dramatic series of events. Joe Boko was in the studio. He gave an appeal. If anyone knows where they can find his son, please call him on his personal number. He got a call after this interview. He dashed to Kawangware. He was reunited with his son. And uh, uh, they say all's well that ends well. But nevertheless, why did this happen? And what needs to be done to ensure it doesn't happen again? That's the discussion that we're getting into shortly. But first things first, here is that report. Curious residents of Kawangwari's Congo 56, some paying for the blood of Edna Kemonto, the woman in whose company two-week-old Prince Ooko, stolen from Kenyatta National Hospital on Sunday, was found. A suspecting resident called Jobo Ooko, the distraught father, shortly after he left our studios. The news that his son could be in one of the houses led us through this path leading to the house where Kemonto had taken the baby. According to one resident who sought anonymity for fear of retaliation, Edna left the area last November while expectant. Alienda nyumbani mwezi wa 11 na alikuwa na mimba. Na hiyo mimba bati ilikuwa imefika. Hata mwenye akaenda skani, kuja kusema kuwa kweli. The family says they twice sent her bus fare to come back to Nairobi with little success. They say it was not until last Saturday that she showed up here at her mother-in-law's, the bits and pieces of her tail not adding up. Saturday, tukashtukia amifika. Na piki piki, na ndizi kwa gunia, na bagi yake yanguo. It is said the mother-in-law was not convinced through her out that evening, but she returned on Sunday with another bundle of joy. Na mimi nikafika nikasema mama, uyu mtoto wa wiki mbili, si mtoto wetu uyu. Akasema uyu mtoto ni wangu niliza tarishi rina ngapi na tatu. Kamonto was at the Kenyatta National Hospital when Oko and his wife showed up at the facility for admission. Hours later, they had to request for assistance from the now alleged thief. She would then disappear into the night without a trace until she was busted this afternoon. Kamonto is expected to be arraigned at Milimani Law Court on Wednesday. Sources also tell Citizen Television that police are in pursuit of our accomplices. All right, all right, joining us in studio to have that discussion, and let me start from the far right, is Esther Mogore from the Department of Child Services. Welcome to the program. Thank you. And right here next to me is Wanjiro Kihusa, founder of Still a Mom, organization that celebrates and supports moms who have gone through pregnancy and infant loss, and also a blogger. Welcome to the program, Wanjiro. Thank you. Before I engage both of you, let's talk to a lady who has asked to remain anonymous. Uh, we, she lives in Kangware. She called Joe Bouko yesterday and informed him that there is a baby that has just been brought into a house near where she lives, and she suspects it could be his son. Uh, let's now bring her in. Habari ya mama, tafadhali? Mzuri sana. Asante sana kwa kutupea hii nafasi kuongea na wewe. Hebu tueleze eh, jana ulifikiria aje kupigia baba Joe Bouko kumwambia kwamba kuna mtoto karibu na kwako na unadhani ni mtoto wake mimi kwanza nilipo nilipo sikia mtoto um, akilia kule nyuma unajua kuna watu wengi ambao walikuja huko wakiona mtoto wakisuspect hata kijana mwenyewe akakataa ule mtoto si wake lakini mama mwenyewe anasema mtoto ni wake lakini sasa wale, ule wakati nilipojua kwamba huyu mtoto ni, ni, ni ule ambaye anatafutwa Vile citizen TV ilionyesha picha ya baba mtoto na mtoto mwenyewe pale. Nikaona hapana huyu ni yule mtoto tuliona kule nyuma anafanana na huyu baba. Lazima akue ni huyu mtoto ambaye anatafutwa. Sasa mimi nikasema hapana. Hapa naona kama kuna ushaidi wa kutosha. Kwa sababu huyu mama ya cha kwanza hanyonyeshi huyu mtoto. Tunamwambia apatie mtoto matiti lakini anasema ati hana yale matiti hana maziwa maziwa haitoki. Sasa itakuwaje kama we ni mama mtoto unasema hauna yale yale maziwa. Ndiyo nikasema hapana hapa naona kama kuna 
kuna question mark nikasema lazima mimi nitapigia yule baba simu nimwambie nilipofungua simu yangu nikaingia kwenye internet nikaona zile CCTV za Kinyata National Hospital zimeonyesha yule yule mama na nikajua ni yule na nikaona pale chini kuna namba ambazo baba yake mtoto alikuwa amepatiana na namba zingine sasa ile namba ya kwanza nilipochukua kupiga nikasikia inaitana tu nikasema eh kwani huyu baba mtoto ni kama ana sio mama anaona ni wale watapeli ama ni aje nikanyamaza mm-hmm. tena nikapiga mara ya pili but kule ilinionyesha ni jobo huko nikajua mpaka awe ndio baba yake mtoto sasa nilipopiga simu nikamwambia kweli walitoa ile hatua na wakakuja niliwaambia hapana mkuje tu muangalie kama sio yule lakini jinsi ninavyojua ni yule mtoto kabisa hata tulivyoona kwenye TV ni yule yule mtoto sijakosea hapo ndio nikachukua hiyo hatua nikamwambia hapana mkuje tu muangalie kama ni yule mtoto ambaye mnatafuta juu jinsi tunavyoona ni yule mtoto ambaye wanatafuta na wakati ulipiga jobo huko alikuambia vipi aliku, uh, uh, how did he respond alinia aliniambia kweli unajua vile unavyoona ni yule 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 mtoto nitasema aki kabisa nimeona zile picha na nikaona ule mtoto kabisa ni wako na akasema aki umefanya vizuri sana mm-hmm. acha tunakuja huko sasa hivi tukuje tuone na huyu Esther Kemunto unaweza tuelezea kuhusu ye unamjua kivipi huyu aitu Esther Kemundo anaitwa Edna Edna ya yeah, uh-huh. huyu ni mama jirani eh madailo wake ni jirani wangu mm-hmm. sasa alikuwa ameolewa na kijana huyu mama sasa tulikuwa tunamjua kama jirani yetu kwa ajili ya huyu mama wako na nyumba yao hapo wanakaa hapo kando lakini hapa kwa madailo wake ndio wanashinda hapo sana sasa si tulikuwa tunamjua yeye ni in law daughter in law wa huyu mama mama jirani yangu mhm And yeah. finally unaweza waambia wa Kenya vipi kuhusu kujua jirani wenu because kama wewe ungepiga hiyo simu mpaka mm. leo jobo huko angeendelea kutafuta mtoto wake na huo mtoto angekuwa tu hapo karibu na wewe Mimi ningependa kuambia wananchi eh, wote kwa ujumla ama taifa, taifa nzima ya kwamba ikiwa wana, wana jambo lolote ambalo wanajua na wamelisikia mahali likienezwa mm-hmm. tafadhali wasio ile hatua wapatiane ripoti ili lile jambo lijulikane wajue ni nini kinachoendelea mahali pale ambapo wanakaa hata nishukuru sana viombo vya habari wakati ambapo e, walikuwa wamezima wamezima viombo viombo vya habari wasionyeshe kama sio hizo viombo kuonyesha hivyo unajua asingejua kama ni yule mtoto ama yule ndio babake mtoto ambaye anatafuta ni yule sasa nashukuru sana walipofungua hizo viombo za habari itabidi tukajua hiyo habari kwa ujumla sasa ningeambia wa Kenya kwa ujumla ama mataifa yote mahali pale walipo ikiwa wanajua jambo lolote linalohusiana na mambo ya kutafuta mtu ama ujue mtu jirani yako ni nani tafadhali mm-hmm hizo ripoti mm-hmm. ama na umesikia vizuri sana wanatafuta mtoto fulani na mm-hmm. we ni mzazi kama mimi ambaye unajua usingwa mtoto kweli una feel yule mama yake mtoto ama babake mtoto ana feel aje mali pale yako hakuli alali kwa ajili ya huyo mtoto mm-hmm. na we unajua ule mtoto penye yako ule mtoto kweli ana, anaumia analia mtoto analia usiku wote mtoto analia akati mm-hmm. maziwa mtoto wa two weeks wali anapatiwa maziwa ya ngombe ama anapatiwa uji Inafaa kweli kupatiane hiyo ripoti Asante. mara moja ifungizwe. Asante sana mama. Um, and of course for our viewers you might be wondering why I haven't introduced her. She requested that we do not uh, mention her name on air. She would like to remain anonymous, but nevertheless I believe the family is so grateful. Kenyans are grateful for what she did. She took the next step to call the father of uh, Uh, you know baby prince oko and you know lo and behold it was prince and uh, at least we can say that uh, that was the end of a very worrying saga that had actually gripped the nation let's talk a little bit about that with my guests here in studio let me first get your reaction baby missing kenya international hospital once again involved uh, we wonder how, what is going to happen baby found let me start with you esther let me just get your initial thoughts okay my name is esther I'm a children's officer at the department of children services um The whole issue is quite emotional like I believe for the parents mm. because uh, once you lose a child it can be very emotional and then again uh, when you look at uh, what will happen to that child in future this child will be kept on being told that uh, you know you are stolen and this uh, the parents may stay for a long time mm. uh, worried that uh, maybe one day our child will get 
kidnapped or will get stolen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And for you, let me get your your opening reaction. Uh, I think I was just really panicked to see, it's because the, the first time I saw that uh, there's somebody who delivered twins and then one of the babies is now missing. Mm -hmm. It's a very worrying trend. I'm a, I'm a new mom, uh, so I, I really don't know even the emotions I would begin to describe if I found out that my child was no longer there and they were missing, they did not pass on, just somebody went off with them. It's a very worrying Thing, I, I think it's something that really keeps you up at night. Okay. So it was quite a relief also to hear that the baby has been found. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Esther, let me come to you. What sort of statistics do you get in terms of missing children in Kenya? Do we have a database? The only figures, I spent some time trying to Google and get figures. The only ones I got were from 2012, 2013. What do we know about missing children in this country? Okay, basically what we know is that uh, every day, almost uh, between seven to ten children get lost especially here in Nairobi okay and uh, what happens is that uh, uh, those children are normally taken especially those that get lost they're normally taken to the police stations and the police stations uh, take them to the children's court so at the end of the day at the children's court you'll note that uh, you will get almost over two uh, almost over 20 or 30 really? in a month Children who are lost or, or whose parents do not know where they are. Okay. So at the end of the day, you, you know that uh, the statistic is quite high. In t even if we have, uh, okay, on one end there's children who are lost, but there's also children who have been kidnapped. Do we yes. have any statistics on that? Do you get cases that someone has taken my child um, or, or something of the sort? Yes, it's there. Okay, do, do you know what, why? Are people looking for profit? What drives people to, to do this from wh whatever research you may have? Uh, b basically, the whole issue of poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, when so it's like a business. It's a business. And then again, if somebody loses a child, and uh, probably the wife uh, or the husband is uh, harassing her. So at the end of the day, you find that uh, this person may opt to go and steal a child or may even decide not to undergo through the process of adoption because the person may consider that to be very long mm -hmm. so expensive. yeah so at the end of the day they decide to steal a child my goodness Wanjiro, yes. let me come to you 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 took to twitter yesterday some interesting line of discussion that got you a lot of positive and negative feedback yeah you you said some things let me read some of your tweets you said that society has made having a child so important that women feel that they are not enough if they don't have a baby. Mm -hmm. uh, you also said that society does not offer, or Kenya does not offer enough psychological support to people who are bereaved. We belittle child loss mm -hmm. so that we don't see why someone should be you know, consoled. Some mm -hmm. places even only give you leave for a week. Yeah. By next week, Monday, Lazima Urudi job. Yeah. Talk to me about those tweets. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that I am not in any way condoning somebody stealing a child. I mean, I want that to be very, very clear. And like I said, I am a mother and I would really raise hell if somebody took my child. But I have also lost a child and I'm trying to also see uh, before we, okay, it's good she has been arrested, she will go to court and um, I mean, she will probably even go to jail and that is good. But can we just lift the matter a bit and dig deeper and find out mm -hmm. how do we ensure this never happens again? What could be the driving force of somebody taking a child? She has mentioned poverty. So what do we do about poverty? Mm -hmm. Also, in the event that somebody is selling this child, who is buying this child? And why do they have to buy a child? And that is why I raise those points of what do we think Let's have about... a bigger conversation. Yes, what do we think about a woman who does not have children? What is our co co collective thoughts as a society about the importance of children in a woman's life? Mm -hmm. How do we react when somebody is infertile? and cannot be, get children and they've been married for five years and they keep going to uh, to shags and everyone has all this you know mnango janini what is the, how how do we react to to this person already internally there is a desperation they have to have a child because and then they keep getting from society that the pressure, pressure mm -hmm. the pressure and and wahiga unfortunately because of my work of working with people who have lost children um, I have worked with over 700 women so far. Mm -hmm. And the stories I hear are heartbreaking. I'm talking about people who have been kicked out and slept in the cold because they had a miscarriage and they came home empty-handed. You know, they did not get support, so but the they were kicked out. the man at home out. says, you're you yes. no welcome here. Yes, I have met women who are not invited to baby showers because you kill children. 
I mean, you, you, you can't even hold other people's kids. Mm. I mean, so as a society, we really need to be asking some really heavy questions. Okay. And that's what I was saying. I was in no way saying that it's okay for anybody to steal a child. You were, you, you were I think, trying to get a broader discussion. And exactly. you've raised some, some very interesting points. So you get a lot of uh, reactions or a lot of testimonies from ladies. You've asked some questions to me. Yes. How do we psychologically support people? Mm -hmm. What kind of comments do you make? Give me examples as answers to some of your questions. Is there psychological support for mothers? In now this there is. Go through now, that? now there is because that's what still a mom offers. Okay. We offer psychological uh, support. But we are, I'm talking about counseling, mm -hmm. either one on one counseling. We are talking about group setups, group <laughs> therapy sessions. We also do a lot of awareness creation on what happens when somebody loses a child, what kind of support do they need from you, you know, and even uh, participating in conversations surrounding adoption, surrounding infertility. What mm -hmm. options are there for this woman and this family? I know people, by the way, who have been actually pretended to be pregnant just so that people keep quiet. Pretended. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Esther, let me come back to you. Even as we continue to talk about um, what we saw yesterday, the disappearance of a child for almost two days, mm -hmm. um, what should parents do, first of all, to, in their best way, try and keep their children safe from yeah. what you've seen? Mm -hmm. What are the most likely cases of when children disappear? Mm -hmm. And also, if you suspect your child has disappeared, or you, know, you, can't, you haven't found them for an hour or two, and you now think, clearly, this is now getting out of hand, what should you do? Who can you call? So those are uh, two questions in one. Okay, I'll start with the last one. Okay. Uh, in case you know that your child has disappeared, you have several options. Okay. One, you can go to the nearest police station and report. The next option is you can also go to the children's office. I was going to say we trust that your report will be taken seriously, but <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> yes, it, it will. It will. Yes, you can also call 116, and then we also work very closely with uh, Missing Child Kenya. Okay. So those are places that you can report and also uh in terms of uh, in scenarios what parents can know uh, in terms of the reports you've heard of, of missing children what mm -hmm. was happening that they ended up missing what can parents do to be more diligent more careful um mm -hmm. just to play their role actually we have a big number of children who who, who run away from home mm -hmm. so in that case now you, as parents we need to understand our children and find out why are they running away from home mm -hmm. apart from that we also have uh, children who are abducted so in that case now as parents we need to teach our children life skills mm -hmm. tell them let them know who, who what what are their name or their names where whom they can call in case of any problem mm -hmm. like you'll find that most children especially between five and six you'll, you'll ask them where do you stay that child doesn't know mm -hmm. you ask that child uh, what's your mom telephone number the, 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 Hajui, mm -hmm. Hajui. So at the end of the day, we need to teach these children their particulars. Like if anything was to happen, what they should do. Mm. Wanjiro, let me come back to you. This incident could have happened, uh, to be quite fair, in any hospital yeah. in Kenya. Yes. But it happened at Kenya International <laughs> Hospital. <laughs> yes, Again, a few weeks. A, a few weeks after, you know, uh, what happened there uh, or the allegations that were brought against the hospital that mm -hmm. led to um, the unearthing of what actually happens in the hospital at night and behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Although I know investigations are still going on and various committees continue to visit that hospital. Nevertheless, um, there are those who say that Kenya International Hospital needs to do something urgently. I know the CEO has come out and said they need more money. Um, the father was here yesterday saying this is unacceptable. Yeah. Something needs to be done. Let me get your thoughts on the same. Um, I think uh, it's exactly what we are talking about today and what we are talking about uh, KNH a while back. Yes. The tendency to uh, find very shallow and quick solutions to something like if somebody says there's insecurity, okay, let's put CCTV. But finding out exactly what areas are vulnerable, uh, can we fix each and every of those areas? What is the uh, uh, process of when somebody walks in? Uh, what kind of security measures do they find? This is a mother who has just delivered twins. How secure is she if somebody can just walk away with her child you know so it's it's really a question of always asking ourselves so what deeper solutions can we look into so that we're not just okay the same way i've said we're not just looking to ensure that edna is put behind bars but what else can we do as a society to ensure that next week we are not here again talking about knh or pumwani or mama lucy or another child abduction case I mean, we need to find some more serious solutions. The CEO was at pains in interviews, even right here in this studio, to explain how they have a beefed-up security system, yeah. CCTV footage, which they took 
possibly a day to provide uh, for the father and the father says once media you know talked about it that's when suddenly he was called by knh and said oh to mepata peter yule mama that's what he was telling us here yesterday yes. um security at that hospital they need to you know get take another look at it again let me let me just get your thoughts on the, on the same and just making patients feel safe in yes. that environment and, and it's also also staff feel safe i mean and, and it, you're right they're spending mm -hmm. the entire day there but i think also it's so sad that it's only until he came to the interview here that KNH was able to produce the, the footage. Because what? how many people don't make it to Citizen or to any other media house? So what is the process if I go and say and lodge a complaint that this has happened to me within your premises? How, how am I responded to? Mm -hmm. How fast is the response? Because if, I mean, child trafficking is extremely serious because then if you delay a week later, the baby is gone. I mean, we can't be saying that we are waiting for footage two weeks later. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it really is, is showing some really serious loopholes in our sect, in our, in our country, really, in our biggest hospital in the country. It, it, it's sad. It's, and, it's and worrying. Yeah. That's how we wrap up this discussion. Thank yeah. you so much, Esther Mogure, from uh, officer with the Department of Child Services, Wanjiro Kihusa, founder of Tila Mom, an organization that celebrates and supports moms who have gone through pregnancy and infant loss, and a blogger. And you recently won an award. I can oh. give you 30 seconds just to tell us a bit about that for your work. Yeah, it's called World Summit Award. Okay. Uh, it's really across the world. And uh, I'll be going to Vienna this uh, next month to pick the award. The idea is they were rewarding people who use technology to solve problems. And so what we do is we use WhatsApp mm -hmm. to have virtual support groups for those wow. who are not in Nairobi. Congratulations. Yes. Bring us that, uh, what is it? Is that little trophy or something? Yes. Bring it trophy. to us I when will. you're back. <laughs> All right. uh, thank you to both of you. Let's now take you to